Midnight Sun is finally coming out, the book that was from right. Edward's perspective. Edward's perspective. Right. Mm -hmm. Would you ever consider like a some kind of recut or doing that film? Does that interest you at all? It would be another film, which would be fun, you know, be mm. fascinating. <laughs> of course, you know, yeah. This show is the best show I've seen on Quibi. It is just fantastic. As a filmmaker, what was the appeal to you in exploring these kind of like seven to 10 minute episodes? I love a story like that, you know, a teenage um, self-discovery, you know, um, coming of age story. But this one just took it to a new level <laughs> of what you discover about yourself when you start digging deeper. And I, so I love that. I love the technology aspect that was actually married to this idea of new technology, the Quibi technology. So it was very sort of integrated, the concept and the story and Quibi. And I like the idea of having these chapters, like when we read books, I love reading books in chapters and some of the great like nonlinear books where you start with another chapter and you have, um, you know, a, a flashback or a different characters point of view. So all of these combinations made me think this is going to be an exciting challenge that yeah. I've never seen before. Helena Howard is an absolute star. How did you guys, I mean, how did you link up? She had starred in that Sundance movie, Madeline's Madeline. And so when people mentioned, watch this movie and you just almost could watch the trailer of the movie and you mm -hmm. see how present she is, how emotionally, you know, uh, available, vulnerable. So I just loved her. And of course we Skyped, or, yeah, that was back in the day of Skype. We <laughs> Skyped, and, you know, uh, so that was, and I really thought, you know, she's gonna bring so much to this, you know, and she's really fascinating and she's tough, you know, and she, she won't do anything that doesn't feel really real, you know. Yeah. Well, you have you have kind of the Midas touch when it comes to working with these these young stars in the making. I mean, Evan Rachel Wood, Oscar Isaac, Nikki Ree, Kristen Stewart, Robert Pattinson, Anna Kendrick, just to name a few of them. Do you think about how much these guys have accomplished who got their start working in your films? Oh, I mean, I'm just so excited when I see all the new projects they're doing and, and you know, everything. All, everybody you just mentioned is incredible, you know, like just done so many different things and starting businesses and, you know, inspiring the world. So it's very cool. <laughs> yeah. If, if I could take a second to geek out, I do have to say that 13 is one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. It is like probably not intended, but it's like my comfort movie. Like I'll throw it on when I just like want to watch it. <laughs> oh, thank I, you. Well, that was so special. You know, obviously Evan and Nikki were only 14. Mm -hmm. They met Holly Hunter and they just brought everything to a, such an immersive experience that even like you say, when you watch it now, it still feels like really alive, you know? You have an incredible knack of, of telling stories through the eyes of, of of young women in a really great way. So what was it about this story that you feel like gets it right? Right, well, what I thought was so fascinating, I mean, this this young woman is trying to explore who I am. She keeps doing these self-portraits kind of obsessively and just not quite sure. She's talking to the therapist, doesn't understand what feels off. Something's off in her family life, it seems like. And then when she does make that discovery of who she, self-discovery, it is more mind-blowing than <laughs> anybody's <laughs> journey of self-discovery. So it took like 13 and almost put it on steroids, what she discovers, you know. Um, Tracy was trying to figure out, should I be the popular girl or the good girl? Well, this girl is trying to find, find something very deep that has a darkness to it and she's trying to still keep the love, empathy and understanding, you know, and continue, pick up the pieces of her life. We were doing a lot of Comic-Con coverage and we were reflecting on Twilight in 2008 and how that's kind of known as like this tipping point where it's kind of shifted how Comic-Con was. I mean, do you, do you reflect on that? Do you think about that often? Oh, yes, of course, for me, that was absolutely crazy. You know, as we, everybody, our whole panel, we stepped out on that stage and people were just going crazy. And it wasn't 
you know, yeah, it was a lot of women. It wasn't all superheroes and action. It was something different, you know, and people like, you know, treated Rob and Chris and everybody like rock stars. Yeah. <laughs> As you can imagine, I, I felt like everybody was about to faint. Like, is this real? It was so thrilling, you know, and I think it was great to have that change, you know, that women mm -hmm. are here and, you know, a story about a young woman could be, you know, loved and embraced. Yeah, and I, I remember like right around when Twilight was coming out, like it wasn't like, we didn't know, like I'm sure you didn't know, is it is this gonna be a hit? Is this gonna be just like a kind of smaller film? So was Comic-Con when you realized like, oh, this is oh, yeah. the phenomenon? We, we really realized it. I mean, it was like a shockwave in that auditorium, you know, it, it was, it was a shockwave, but is that gonna last? I mean, even after Comic-Con, they weren't even sure, is it going to, you know, will it make only 30 million opening weekend? Well, it made 69 million opening week. So it, it even then blew out the expectations. I'm curious, I don't even know if you've given this any thought, but Midnight Sun is finally coming out, the book that was from right. Edward's perspective. Edward's perspective. Right. Mm -hmm. Would you ever consider like a, some kind of recut or doing that film does that interest you at all i think the recut would be difficult because you know we did stay a lot more in bella's head like mm -hmm. we did in this with aisha's head you know but i so it would be another film which would be fun you know be mm -hmm. fascinating <laughs> of course you know yeah um rob is batman now so <laughs> they have moved on and Kristen has done a million beautiful projects so you know who knows what would happen but yeah this, uh, Kristen and charlie's angels is like one of the most gorgeous women i've ever seen in my life Funny and fun <laughs> oh yeah she's great she's uh, oh she's my favorite and then rob being batman how, how did you feel when you heard that casting i mean i can't wait to see it because i know he's gonna just bring la layers that are fascinating you know because he is a very fascinating person so I'm, I'm excited about it yeah he's gonna knock it out of the park um well thank you so much for your time this show is just fantastic i can't wait to yeah. watch the rest <laughs> and such it's an honor to talk to you and our new and this actress helena howard yeah. is fantastic too i think people are going to really dive into her and feel a lot about her and this this project so i can't wait for you to see the other episodes because it just keeps getting better i know i can't wait thank you so much for your time thank you